morning, everybody. Uh, we're heading to Wilmington, North Carolina here. Uh, going over to our Ari Michael branch to do some work over there. Uh, they want me to check out one of their condensers where the evaporator is leaking and they're going to change it out. And they want to make sure their condenser is worth saving as well. So I'm going to give it a look-see and see what we think of it. Um, pressurize it because the evaporator leaks pretty badly. We're going to remove the rest of the refrigerator in the system if there's any at all and uh, separate the system inside and out with the service valves, pressure check it, and just put the mega ohm meter on it and things like that. Just to make sure that they're not going to uh, replace an evaporator and have an awful condenser outside. All right, we're recovering the refrigerant out of this Goodman slash ICP that Ari Michael has. Uh, we already checked the compressor with the mega ohm meter. It was fine. Contact has been changed, looks like. Got power jumped off the old disconnect, making sure I did not get the high leg as it would destroy my equipment. Because you have 240 volt potential to ground. So I'm gonna pump this thing down and then pump it full of nitrogen to separate it into the surface valves and see which section leaks, probably the evaporator. And then we're gonna change out the section that's leaking. Now that all the refrigerant is out of the system, I'm gonna shut down the service valves. Switch one of the hoses over to the uh, heat sampling port here and uh, take pressures from each side of the service valves and see which way we're dropping. I'll probably actually leave it for a while, even for a day or two. Uh, I'll watch it for a little while to see if I see an immediate drop, but if not, we'll just leave it on there. Well, guys, we didn't get very far. That seems like a pretty bad look to me. I noticed some discoloration on it when I opened it up. I didn't know it was going to be that bad. <laughs> it might actually not be as bad when it's open. <laughs> but, you know, it's going to be hard to test it with it open. Well, I'd say that service valve leaks pretty badly, and we're already down to zero. Uh, they've actually decided they, they think they're going to change out the whole system. So we'll probably move it down the wall, run a new line set up the wall into a new air handler. So, probably for the best. Um, but we'll try to catch that as it happens next week. Here's our big old comfort maker ICP air handler. This is up in the attic of Ari Michael. We're going to be taking this thing out, putting in one of their air temp units built by Nordine, four tons. Uh, so I'm going to disconnect all this stuff. And for today, because it's already in the afternoon, I'm just going to concentrate on getting this stuff out of the attic. And then tomorrow, I'll come back and start fresh, try to finish the rest of the job. All right, guys, it's our Nordine four ton air handler. And it is Nordine because R. Michael sells Air Temp, which is like a little sub brand of Nordine. We have our returns, there's one off the top, two off the other side of this box. We have our little copper connections down there. It is micro channel coil, hey, it's not my decision. Got a little insulating to do tomorrow. The existing fitting was perfect for this duct. Although someone broke the duct work down on the first joint in between those first two takeoffs there, it's broken in half. So I'm gonna repair that, but I'm gonna do that last because that was a surprise addition. So, but it was three phase. The electrician's gonna come turn into single phase, which is pretty easy. Um, that's about it. We're gonna run a new line set tomorrow and set the air temp condenser. But there we are. Nice shiny new box from downstairs. And we'll get back on this tomorrow. Okay guys, it's day two over here on the install. Is our air handler over there. We've come across the attic because we are looking for a place to run the line set, new line set. So what I'm doing is we're coming down on the inside wall. We are now running the line set across the attic and I'm going to actually hang it up and stuff. I'm just getting the armor flex on it because this armor flex has to be a one inch wall armor flex and outside it has to be an inch and a half. It's just uh, stupid. I mean, I understand energy and everything like that, but they're going to make it so we can't actually fit anything anywhere. But that's what I'm working on now. This is the copper for our line set that runs between the indoor unit, which we're looking at right now, and the heat pump outside. We have our 3 8 liquid line. And we're referring to items in the cooling mode. Liquid line and suction line. In the heating mode, it would be different. It would be hot gas. So this runs back to our heat pump. And we're just shy of being termed a long line set by just a few feet. So you could go either way with it, but according to the Nordine guidelines, 80 foot is a long line set, and we're not quite there. So we have our two lines, copper 
and our one thermostat wire 18.8. I always run a little bit more conductor, just put a little bit more as far as conductors in the line because you never know what's going to be there in the future. It could be two stage, something where you need more conductors. So there we are. I'm going to braise it up here and braise it up way over there in the attic where it comes up. I want to keep the joints out of the wall, so we put them up in the attic. So I'm going to go do that and move on. There's our old air tamp heat pump. We have our brazing done. We have a dryer out here. Finishing up brazing and we will insulate after we pressure check with nitrogen. And that is as far as we'll be able to go today because the electrician hasn't wired it up. So we won't be able to, I won't pull a vacuum and do anything else until he's finished. That way we'll have an extra long pressure check. Here's our air temp all done, sitting in place. Here's our dryer. I painted the ends of the dryer, try to keep it from rusting, uh, because you know after you braise it, there's a little bit of damage to some of the paint, and that leading edge of paint will be where the rust starts. So it's good to go. We have to wait for the electrician so we can start it up, but all done for today. All right, we're out at R.A. Michael again today. It's been about a week or so. The electricians have come and wired up everything. Stealing a little bit of power and pulling a the vacuum, then after this gets done, we'll go ahead and weigh a little bit of charge in, then turn her on and finish the charging process. All right, we're releasing the charge right now into uh, the line set. I weighed in at about 20, 25 ounces. I know it's gonna need a little bit more than that, but I just want to get it a jump on it. About a pound, seven ounces, so a little bit more. Yeah, that's about right. One pound, seven ounces, 23 ounces. And the uh, charge is going in right now, and we'll start it up here in a second, and see how we're doing. Right now, we're charging the system with an R410A about three pounds and then we have a pretty long line for it, if you guys remember. Going by the little charging chart right here they have. There's a little micro channel coil is a little bit more finicky as far as charging. I want to make sure I go by their specs on this one. Right now our system is running at 13 amps and 240 volts. We'll continue to watch this number as we charge and see if it increases. But I think we're probably pretty close, pretty close to charge so we probably won't have too much of a difference between what we have now what we end up with. Alright guys, we're sitting at about 301 pounds. In that area, we fluctuated from 306, 307 down to about 301 in that area. Our amps are running around 13.6. We've got all the way up to 13.9 as the pressure fluctuates. And let's take a look at the charging chart and see what it says as far as where we should be on the line. We're measuring 90 degrees at 305. As you guys see, at 90 degrees, we can plug the line up. It's right around 300, maybe a shade over. So we're pretty close to being right on the line. So as long as we sit tight, we should be good to go. All right, here's one of our outlets. I got my little handy laser thermometer. Shoot up in there. 59 degrees, nice and cold, baby. Here's our return. 73.5. So right now, from the return to the supply, we got about 15 degrees. Of course, you may assume that by the time it gets to the unit, it will have warmed a little bit, just as when the supply leaves the unit, it will be slightly colder. So we are looking pretty good, especially with the amount of humidity up here. So I'm a pretty happy camper. And as far as the old field piece thermometer, it's not really, I don't know. I guess I don't consider it a scientific tool, but you know, you're checking stuff it can sort of confirm what you find out through other means, like if you see your charge is correct and you just want to make sure the temperature is correct. Here's some old Unico stuff up here. This has probably been sitting here for quite a while. <laughs> Didn't really catch on that much, I don't think. But, old space pack and things like that. But, I will. I'll be up here for another 10 years. I'm up here at the air handler with the float switch because it tripped. I wanted to find out what was going on, and I saw that the water had risen to the top of the trap, set off the switch, shut down the compressor, just like it's supposed to, which is good, which is better than having not put it in and finding this out tomorrow. But what had happened is I had forgotten to install a vent for my drain. And what happens if you don't have a vent and there's a double trap? Because this drain line runs all the way down there all the way down the side of the warehouse, under a slab and out the back. So the odds are there's another trap in that drain somewhere just because it sags. So vapor is being trapped between the two water traps, causing it not to drain. So I'm installing my vent here so that it allows that air 
to vent and the water can then drain. So a little lesson to everybody. I didn't do it initially and I paid the price. So now I got it in there and it should drain properly. And it seemed to drain properly when I poured water down it. So we'll find out if that's the case when I restart the unit. I went around back to the supply house because I wanted to make sure that our drain was doing all right. The one in the center is the system that serves the downstairs. Uh, it's a little bit overcharged, so it's uh, <laughs> coils a little cold. But this is our drain upstairs, and it is draining, which makes me very happy. So I think we are successful. We charged up our unit very nicely. We're right on charge, and we are done. So until next time, maybe we'll take a little bit. One last look at the unit. There she goes. She's all done. We are off to the next call. I just got another call, and starting to change the furnace tomorrow, so no time to spare. I will see you guys on the next one.